I'm Chris Conrad. I'm Nikki Norris. For me, it was in 1976. Oh, wow. It was the first time I was here, yeah. And uh, I came with my sister. We were traveling around Europe. And uh, we got to go to the Paradiso. Uh -huh. And we knew at that time that we could buy hash. But there, I don't think there were too many coffee shops happening at that point. So I remember walking around the Paradiso and looking for somebody who might be selling some hash and there was this guy and he was dancing and I, it looked like he was selling some and I said, excuse me, are you selling some hash? And he said, uh, yes. And I said, how much is it? And he said, well, you try some and you see how much you want. And he seemed like a good one because other people were laying on the, on the hallways, passed out. And I thought, I don't want that. I want to be dancing. So found a good one then. Mm -hmm. That was my first time. And I didn't come until 1985 and uh, it was just a part of a European trip. So I landed in Amsterdam, of course, and got high before I went to the rest of Europe and it was quite a nice trip. <laughs> the first time we came together was in uh, 1991. And our original idea was to take a trip around the world, but because of the currency, uh, changed very negatively for us. Uh -huh. uh, all of a sudden our money wasn't worth very much and so we decided instead let's try living somewhere for a while instead. And so uh, when we first came to Amsterdam we had already heard of the uh, Hash Museum and so um, we uh, connected with uh, Alan. Teaching people about their history because that's all we do. We, it's not so we don't make up a story you know it's this is our history. We present our history uh, and unfortunately, we cannot find this history in our school books. Ben Dronkers. It's not only a museum, it, it tells the story. It tells the story of a plant from thousands of years ago. Well, when we walked inside, I pulled out a sketchbook and I said, well, if this was my museum, I'd do this. And I started drawing pictures of what I would do for displays. And so they said, well, let's talk about that. And we were able to stay here for six months while we were working on mm -hmm. curating and designing the museum and putting up the information. And and looking back, these are really were the golden years almost. seemed like it to us. We thought it was the beginning of a new age, actually, you know, because we were in the U.S. very uh, repressive under uh, George Bush Sr. And uh, we came here and it was... Room number four! exciting time, that's, that's for sure. It was very inspiring, let me put it that way. It gave us the sense that when we left here, we said, we have a clear idea of what we want in the United States. We want to have you know, stores like coffee shops. Uh, when we were here, people were growing in their backyards a lot. So we thought, well, you know, we already knew we wanted that anyway, but <laughs> you know. But it was my first sense of real cannabis freedom. Mm -hmm. and to being here back in 1993 and yeah. feeling like, oh, you know, we could sit in a coffee shop and smoke a joint. And there's a police officer walking by and he's saying, good day, and, and it was fine. And he's <laughs> like, wow, this is what we wanted in the United States. <laughs> Your source of cannabis news. Cannabis News Network.